hear my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. get this image in my mind as every time I hear that song of boy just the picture of the cross there on the hill Golgotha and um, I don't know I just see myself at the base of it clinging to the cross um, man aren't you glad for the cross <laughs> amen everything starts and ends with the cross really doesn't it and Paul's going to conclude in his letter, really, with that that idea that, man, our 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 the beginning of our faith uh, begins at the cross. Nobody 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 comes into a relationship to Christ to God apart from the cross and the blood that was shed there on the cross. And at the end of our days, um, it's that cross that has secured our eternity in Christ. Of course, there's the burial and resurrection of Christ, and we know that life, he's first raised from the dead, but boy, there's that passage through the cross, and, and I think, you know, the, the cross applies to us every single day of our lives. Um, Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. That's a dying to self, and it's because of the cross that you and I have power to be able to die to self. Self is a wretched thing, isn't it? I was thinking yesterday how many words we have in our English vocabulary begin with self. Self-esteem, self-preservation, um, self-worth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and really, <laughs> it's kind of it's sad because there's, there's nothing in self that can give us any, any hope. There's nothing in self that can give us any glory. There's nothing in self that can that can secure our eternal hope. And so we really need to eradicate that word self from our life and, and replace it with cross because it's the cross of Christ that enables you and I to, to live what we call the Christian life, to walk with him. And it's through the cross that he has enabled us to, to come into relationship with him, that he lives his life through us. And so Paul begins in verse 11, kind of in his closing paragraph of this letter, where he makes a statement, See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. Evidently, Paul had some type of, we believe, had some type of, of vision ailment or disease or illness. And uh, probably most of the letter he, he dictated to someone else who scribed that letter. But here we wanted to validate that, that he, in fact, was the author of this letter. Of course, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. God used human instruments. He inspired them, carried along those men as they wrote the scriptures. Uh, we have to settle on that, that this is not just a book that contains the Word of God, but it is the very Word of God. If it's not the very word of God, then it's subjective to whatever we might want to impose on it, our ideas. It's not just a guide for living, but it is the very word of God as God had originally inspired those writers, carried them along as they wrote it. Verse 12, he says, It is those who want to make, uh, make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised, and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Now, remember, he's writing this letter because there were those that came in among the church body and they were preaching another gospel. They were adding to the gospel justification by faith alone in Christ. And they were saying that, yes, the cross is, is, uh, is valid, the cross is good, but you still have to be circumcised. And that other gospel, that another gospel, Paul very vehemently writes, man, if, if anybody else is preaching another gospel other than the gospel that I preached to you, let them be accursed. And 
It's not the cross plus something else for our salvation. It's the cross and it's the cross alone. And so he is writing and he's saying here that um, the reason that they're wanting to force you to add something else to the cross is so that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. You see, the cross is offensive. The cross is an offense because what the cross tells us is that there is absolutely no way that we in our flesh, by our own flesh efforts, can be made right before God. It's only by the cross. And Paul was being persecuted for preaching the cross of Christ. Today, there are those who are being persecuted all around the world for preaching the cross. In America, uh, in the Western world, there are those who have removed the cross, maybe the image of the cross, or even preaching the cross of Christ because it is an offense. In a desire to, to gain a larger audience, they've erased the cross. Listen, our Christian faith depends and rests on the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ where he died on the cross and paid the penalty for our sins. You see, the cross tells us that there is a judgment coming. There's a judgment of God coming upon all mankind. And those who have not trusted Christ will be judged according to their sin. And see, when we, when we confront or when we promote the cross, we are saying, listen, there's a judgment coming, but there's one who has taken the judgment, the wrath of a holy God on himself in our place. Man does not want to recognize that, that they, are, they have sinned against a holy God. And so the cross is an offense. And Paul was being persecuted because of the cross. And these little weasels who had come in and were adding more to the cross, they didn't want to be persecuted. And so they denied the cross. Then in verse 13, he says, For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law. But they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. They're hypocrites. They, they don't even keep the law themselves. And they're desiring for you to be circumcised. They're desiring for you to add to your faith some works so that they might boast in your fleshly efforts. That they might stand up and say, look at, look at what these people are doing. Look, look at how righteous and they're following these things and and i'm the one that has led them to so that they might boast in their fleshly works there are preachers that do that today god help them uh that they they want to take on uh for themselves glory in what those that are following them are doing we can't boast in anything but the cross and paul says that but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our lord jesus christ the only thing that we have to boast in is the cross of Jesus. I can't boast in my good works. You can't boast in your good works. I can't boast in anything other than the cross of Jesus Christ. And so let us brag on that, if you will. Let us boast in that. And when we're boasting in the cross, we're acknowledging, we're professing that I have no good in me whatsoever. It's only the cross that I can boast in. He goes on to carry this idea by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. You know how we have victory in Christ? It's by boasting in the cross. The grace of God that was exhibited to us through the cross. And through the cross, we have been crucified to the world. We died to the world. Paul said that we have to reckon ourselves in Romans to be dead to the flesh. Oh, that flesh is still living. That flesh, that old nature still rails its ugly head. But it's the cross who has broken the strong back, if you will, of the flesh. We cannot, we cannot overcome the flesh by fleshly efforts. I can't dress it up. I can't make it up. Um, if you put lipstick on a pig, what is it? It's still a pig. It's only by the cross. Then he concludes, starts to wrap up for verse 15, for neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything but a new creation. 
We have been made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 16, And as for all who walk by the rule, peace and mercy, uh, walk by this rule, that is the rule that, that circumcision or uncircumcision doesn't mean anything. The only rule that we walk by is that Christ has paid for our sins on the cross. May peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. May we walk in grace and peace and mercy today. The only peace that we have is a peace that Christ has made for us with a holy God through his shed blood on the cross. I pray the Lord gives you an opportunity to to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart today or to cultivate a seed that's already been planted there or if God by his grace would allow us to participate, to watch someone come to Christ as he saves them. Man, wouldn't that be good? I pray the Lord blesses you today. He keeps you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Um, I love you. Have a great day.